like a volunteer, be it a Muslim brother, be it a Muslim brethren or a Christian brethren to kindly unmute his microphone and give us the opening prayer before we proceed. Thank you. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Father, Lord, we appreciate you. We give you all the glory. We appreciate you for this day. We thank you for the upliftment of our lives and our businesses. Daddy, we say we are about to start right now. We commit everything unto your holy end. Father, come and take control. Amen. And Amen. Everything, let your name alone be glorified. Amen. Amen. Just my name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that um, wonderful prayer. Thank you for prayer again. And um, once again, you are all welcome to today's induction of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria in collaboration with African Institute of Strategic Managers. The Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, as I earlier said, is a professional, licensed professional institution with the responsibility of training and retraining managers in order to promote professional ethics practice to its highest. And one of the man key mandates given to us is to admit people based on experience and qualification. The mandate is to admit the general public based on experience and qualification. And then when institute attend a total membership of 10,000 members, after which we can now proceed to the National Assembly for an act to establish the Chartered Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. And to the glory of God today, the Institute is over 8,000 member strength. And the essence of that day is to know if the Institute will be able to stand the test of time. This mandate given to us is just like every other mandate given to institution of learning, such as um, the higher institution in the land before accreditation of courses at the university level. First, the department has to be in existence before we can now talk of the accreditation. The same thing applies to professional institution of learning like us. In our 11th um, years of uh, journey of professionalism, the Institute, like I said earlier on, has inducted over 8,000 members from all walks of life. During the COVID-19 lockdown, for months, the Institute didn't fit to still carry out learning, trainings, for members and non-members via the virtual platform which we are on today. Though the reason why we are still utilizing the virtual platform today is not because of the restriction of um, COVID, but because of another serious issue ravaging our land, which we cannot afford to endanger the lives of our members and intending members who deem it fit to be part 
of the Institute. We all know the security situation of um, the country today. That is one of the reason the management of this institute has decided to make every trainings and um, induction workshop to still remain online pending when sanity return to the land. As a result of that, we are all having you all connected from every part of um, the country today. Once again, you are all welcome. I want to congratulate you in advance for deciding to take the bull by the horn, despite the economic reality facing us as a nation and every other challenges. But we still decided to deem it fit to be part of um, the journey of professionalism of um, this great institute. Once again, you are all welcome. And on that note, I want to acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Registrar of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, in persons of um, Dr. Abdullah Ijibri Salu, who is present with us today and is also going to serve as the well of knowledge in which we are going to tap from in the course of um, today's um, induction on the paper title, The Roles of a Professional Managers in a Dynamic Environment. Mr. Registrar, sir, I want you to quickly unmute your microphone and say hello to the house before we take the introduction of every other intending members who are connecting us today. Thank uh, you, thank sir. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone in the house. You are welcome morning, to the sir. August morning, gathering sir. of the Institute in the month of uh, July. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank That's you. the voice for Honorable Register of the Institute of Professional Majors and Administrators of Nigeria, who is also serving as the country director for African Institute of Strategic Managers. Like I told you earlier on, that the mandate of the Institute one of our key vision is to bridge the gap between professional managers and administrators across Nigeria and Africa and beyond. And one of our key area and interest in um, raising professional practice to its highest is um, the ability of the Institute having collaboration with other international reputable institution of learning. And that, to the glory of God, gives us the, the sole responsibility of being the only institute in Nigeria overseeing the affairs of African Institute of Strategic Majors with our head office in Republic of Ghana. On that note, I would like to quickly take the introduction of all the intending members who are connected here today. Permit me to still use that word intending members, even though you have made all your financial commitments in order to be a member of the Institute. You are yet to be a member until the oath of uh, professional conduct of the Institute is administered to us. That is when we can now call you a bona fide member of the institute. But now you still remain a pros uh, an intending or what we call prospective um, members. On that note, we have to take um, the introduction. And uh, like I said earlier on, my name is Yusuf Abubakar Sadiq, a membership coordinator with the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. And I am presently connecting with you all here from Kano State, Nigeria. We are going to follow this trend by introducing one after the other. Once I call on your name or your device, you kindly unmute yourself, tell us your name, where you work, and where you are connecting from. Thank you. 
the first uh, person I have on my screen here is um, by name Elizabeth, Elizabeth Gida. Please, El Madam Elizabeth, if you can hear me, kindly unmute your mic. I can hear you. Tell us your full name right, and where you work and where you are. Writing. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, fellow Good morning. Colleagues. I'm Elizabeth Jidda Bakar. I'm connecting live from Abuja. I work with NICEL PLC, Abuja. You are welcome. It will be on. Thank you, sir. The next thing here is how are you? Yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, ma. Good, good morning. morning. Yeah, the full names are Hawa Mijinyo Aliu. I work with Dangote Smith Lagos. I am now speaking from Lagos. You are welcome, Madam. It will have you honored. Thank you, sir. The next um, person here is Onyemelukwe Nami. Please, you can hear me kindly on your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, my name is um, Onyemelukwe Nami Nonsto. Um, I work with Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund, NSITF, Millard Branch, Lagos. You are welcome, sir. The next person you, here is uh, Dennis Smart. Mr. Dennis, please um, introduce yourself to. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning. sir. Uh, my full name is uh, Ibama Dennis Owen Smart. And uh, I work with uh, Lafarge Holcim at Ewekoro and presently in Lagos as well, head office. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dennis Martin. It's good to have you board. This person here is um, Dr. Nnamdi Okoro. Dr. Nnamdi Okoro. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is- Good morning. Dr. My name is Dr. Nnamdi Okoro. Uh, I'm calling from uh, Otakot, I'm the uh, MD CEO of Grenamot Integrated Services Limited, based in Otakot as well. Thank you. You are welcome, doctor. And um, the next person we have is Buba. Buba Adamu, please um, tell us where you are connecting from, Mr. Buba. Uh, good morning, sir. Um, good morning, good morning, sir. Good morning, colleagues. Can you hear me? We can yeah, go Buba ahead. Adamu by name. I'm, I'm Buba Adamu by name. I'm from Nigeria Army University, Bio, Borno State. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And it's good to have you on board. The next person we have here Thank is um, by name Abba, Abbas I. Ahmed. Abbas I Ahmed, please tell us your connection from. Good morning, everyone. My name is Abbas Ahmed. I am connecting from Abuja. I work with IHS Towers. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. And the uh, next one we have here is Ade Loba Omal Omolola. Olufun B, please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Good morning, everyone. Good, um, morning. I don't know Good morning. Good morning. I'm connecting from I'm working with Mountain of Fire and Miracle Ministry. God bless you. Amen. You are welcome. It's good to have you all. The next thing is I want Emmanuel. I feel in my please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Let me correct you. Let me correct the pronunciation. I feel Emmanuel. So um, I feel I feel Osai Emmanuel. I'm connecting from uh, Lagos State. I work with micro investment support services, a leasing company. We are into leasing of any kind. Thank you very much. 
You are welcome, sir. The next person here is I know Jacob Olajide. I know Jacob Olajide. My name is I know Jacob Olajide. I work with Liberal State Government. Coming from Badagi. You are welcome, sir. The next person, Aisha Barra Assam. Aisha Barra please tell us where you're connecting from. Aisha Barra Abdesam, can you hear me? All right. Um, Bishew, Bishew, with iPhone, please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, as you said, I'm Dr. Bele Shewu. Who are Dr. Shewu from Katuna? Thank you very much. You are on, sir. I do have you on board. Then um, we have um, Damilari Oyedele. Please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from, Mr. Damilari. Uh, good morning. My name is Damilari Oyedele. I'm connecting from Lagos State. I work with uh, Mudami International Limited, Lagos. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. It's good to have you on board. Um, the next thing here is Davovas. Davovas, please, um, if you can hear me, unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Dakova. Good morning, I'm calling, sir. Um, I'm right. calling Lagos. Uh, I work with Providence Bank, Lagos. You are welcome, sir. The next person here is uh, Dr. Nnamdi Okoro. Dr. Nnamdi Okoro, please, Doc, if you can hear me, unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. I've introduced myself earlier. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry about that. Then uh, we have um, Dr. Regina Inem. Dr. Regina Inem, please, let's have your introduction. Good morning, everyone. I'm Good Dr. Rachel Mariam. I'm the founder and executive director of Recommence Foundation. I'm excited to be here. You are welcome, madam, and it's good to have you on board. I'm we have a um, Egbunu. All right, all right. You're welcome, ma'am. Egbunu Hajara, please, uh, motor my phone allows where you connect from. Ebuno Ajara, if you can hear me, unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. I can hear you. I can hear you. Please, uh, please, uh, Bruno, Adam, Bruno, Bruno, Adam, Adam, check, uh, check your, uh, check your connection. Uh, we can hear you. We can hear you. All right. We have right. that. Uh, we have that. Uh, this one is Ernest Odili. Ernest Odili. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, everyone. My name yeah, is Ernest Odili. I'm connecting from Pohakot. Uh, I work with uh, Hess Holding Oil and Gas in Pohakot. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. Then, um, Uh, 
Is that over, Karo? Mute yourself. Madam Lovett, or Lovett, or Bia, please, that's where you are next from. Modupe Adeshino. Modupe Adeshino. Please, if you can hear me, unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. I work with Oyo State Government as an administrative officer. Thank you. You are welcome. We have Miss Innocent. Mr. Innocent, please unmute the microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Mr. Innocent. Mr. Leslie, if you can hear me, please, sir, unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting, sir. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. I am connected at, uh, from Gombe, the headquarters of Gombe State. Hello, can you hear You're me? You're welcome, sir. Yes, go ahead, sir. Yes, I am the director of youth development at the Ministry of Youth Development here in Gombe. You, you are welcome, sir. Yes, thank you. Have you. I wish us all the best. Thank you, sir. The next um, person we have here is Oluwemi Olusheyinde. Oluwemi Olusheyinde, please tell us where you're coming from. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, sir. My, my name is Ola Sende Femi Samuel. I'm an instant surveyor and value working with Dubai Longi Associates. I'm connecting from Lagos. Thank you. You are, you are welcome, sir. It's good to have you on board. Then um, we also have um, Oluwa Femi Obadari. Oluwa Femi Obadari. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, um, my name is Olua Femi Abadari. Um, I'm currently from Lagos, and I work with uh, Digital Encode Limited here in Lagos, a cybersecurity company. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. I need to be heard. Omare Ayeji. Omare Ayeji. Please, if you can hear me on the microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Kumwari Ayodeji. I work for DFS Technologies, an IT company based in Abuja. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. And it's good to have you on board. We have an awesome fortune. On some fortune, please, on both microphone and that's where you are connecting from. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, Working from the city of Ibadan. Here in the city of Ibadan. Thank you, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, sir. It's to have a um, much work to my family. Next. Uh, Person we have um, on our screen here is Rayana to Haidara. Please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Rayana to. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rayana to Mohammed Haidara. Um, I'm connecting from Abuja. I'm the CEO in Uri Nigeria Limited. You are welcome. Thank you, sir. Then um, we have. Another person we have on our screen here is um, Samuel. Samuel, please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Good morning, everyone. My name is Samuel Ogunberu. I'm calling from Cumberland University. I'm an administrative officer. 
Covenant University. You're of... welcome, um, that's more, and it's good to have you on board. The next uh, person is uh, Madam Tessie. Please, if you can hear me, I'm with your microphone and introduce yourself to the house. Good morning, all. You're all welcome. My name is I'm the national coordinator. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Matesi. You're welcome. Um, the next thing here is uh, Victoria Ekomo. Victoria Ekomo, please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Everybody. Oh. Uh, my name is uh, Victoria Ekomo. I'm connecting from uh, Lagos. I work with Transport. You are, you are welcome, ma. Okay. The next person um, we have here is Wasiu Bakari. Good mama. Please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are calling, connecting from, Mr. Wasiu. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, Wasiu Bakari. I'm the sales manager for Iromega Atlantic Nigeria. So I'm calling from local giant Kogisi. You are welcome. The next person here is Yakubu Gawan. Please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Yakubu Gawan. Good morning, Honorable House. Good My morning, name is sir. Yakubu. I work with the state government and I'm calling from Benin City. You are welcome on board, sir. It's good to have you on board. I was actually thinking that it was um, the former president, Yakubu Gowon, that we have uh, in our meeting. I would have just uh, booked an appointment with him right from uh, Kano this morning and see how I can meet with him. At this least that will be on my record. That will be on my record. I have been a, a guest to one of the former presidents of Nigeria. <laughs> anyway, it's good to have you on board, sir. It's a pleasure. Yeah, you're welcome. Then um, the next person we have here is Ademola Adewo Adewo. Please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from, Mr. Ademola. Yeah. Good morning. Um, yeah. So my name is Ademola, and um, I am a consultant hematologist and um, the clinical laboratory director at Evaki Hospital in Lekki. I'm connecting from Lagos. Thank you a lot. You are welcome, sir, and it's good to have you on board as well. Amina Akinsumbo, please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from, madam. Good morning, all. Good morning. My name is uh, Amina. My name is Amina Akinsumbo. I'm connecting live from Lagos. I work with Salina Healthcare Financial System. It's a great pleasure to be here today. Thank you. You're welcome, and it's good to have you on board as well. We have um, Ayodeji Olumide. Ayodeji Olumide. Yes, thank you very much. Good morning, all. Good My morning. name is Ogunjobi Ayodeji Olumide, the registrar Jai Polytechnic Ikerekiti in the Kiti State. So I'm calling from, and I'm joining the meeting from Ikarekiti in the Kiti State. Thank you. All right. You are welcome. Um, the next uh, person we have here is Emmanuel Ikoko. Please tell us where you are connecting from, Mr. Emmanuel. Okay. Good morning. Emmanuel Ikoko. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm connecting from Lagos. I work with uh, Pladis uh, Global, makers of Magbetis Biscuit. You are welcome, sir. Then um, we have um, Monica Kasumo. Please, madam, unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. Good morning, professional colleague. My Good name morning, is Monica I'm connecting from Lagos and I work with Crown Flower Mills, Lagos. Thank you. It's nice having you. 
You are welcome, Ma, and it's good to have you on board. The next um, person on my screen here is um, by name Bami Dele. Please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from, Mr. Bami Dele. All right. Um, we also have um, a screen showing NAPHDA. Um, Please, if you are there, unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. That is um, Navda Dahar. Please, if you can hear me. Okay. Ojo Gebre Anya GA. Ojo Gebre Anya GA. Please tell us where you are connecting from. Good morning, everyone. Good my, morning. Name is, my name is Ojo Gabriel Anyaji. I am connected from Calabar, Cross River State, and I work at Cross River State Property Development and Investment Limited, Calabar, as a senior manager administration. Thank you. God bless you. You are welcome, sir. Then uh, we have um, Sheyi Ajiboyi. Sheyi Ajiboyi. Yes. Hello. Hello, good morning, Hello. everyone. Good morning. My name is Olua Sheyi Ajiboyi. I work with Mary Stopes. I'm calling from, uh, I'm joining this call from Abuja. Thank you. You are welcome, madam. It's good to have you on board. Stephen Ekperobe, please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from, sir. Mr. Steven. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Steven Eperobe. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm connecting from Port Harcourt. I work with Fidelity Bank PLC. I manage one of the branches in Port Harcourt. I manage of You are welcome, sir, and it's good Thank to you. have you on my board. Pleasure. We have um, Ugona. Ugona AB. Please unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from, Mr. Ugona. Ogona, please, if you can hear me, unmute your microphone and tell us where you are connecting from. All right. Um, please, is there anyone that has um, not introduced his or herself? The person should quickly unmute his or her microphone and quickly do that. Within the next one or two minutes, let's have their introduction before we we'll proceed. Good, yes. good morning, Hall. Hello. Good morning, Hall. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. One after the other. Please. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sir. This is Engineer Kitley Taiwo. Good morning. This is Engineer Kitley Taiwo. Calling from. All right. Just precisely. All right. Thank you are welcome, sir. You are welcome. Good morning, Galaxy everyone. Tab A, okay. please. Galaxy Tab good morning. A. Good morning. Go ahead. Good morning. My name is Abdullah Yusuf Mohammed. I'm connecting from Lagos. I work with Foundation Systems Nigerian Limited. Thank you. You're welcome. Infinite Hot 10, Good. please. Unmute your microphone and introduce yourself. Infinite Hot 10. Hello. Good morning. Hello. My name is Adewale Abdu. Hello. Hello, go ahead. I work with Codley Business Solution PLC as a risk manager. Thank you for having me. You are, wel you are welcome, sir. Welcome. Hello. Hello, go ahead, Hello. Mr. Hello, Omar. good morning. Yes, morning. I'm Dr. Muhammad Umar. I'm connecting from Kasana. I work with Hospital Service Management Board of Kasana Street. You are welcome. Thank you. Um. Aisha Vera Abdullah, you are raising. Uh, please go ahead and um, introduce yourself if you have not done that. Hello, good morning, everyone. Hello. This is uh, good morning. Aisha Vera Abdul Salam from Kaduna State. I work with um, NHIS. Thank you. You are welcome. Amolade Onyiloye, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. Good morning. My name is Omolade Inoye. I'm the Cadbury Nigerian PLC. Nice meeting you all. 
You're welcome. And um, if you need ten. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Good morning, everyone. Yes. Good morning. Go ahead. Yes. Good morning. My my name is uh, Innocent Ocheada, the Vice Chairman of Alliance in Motion Global Nigeria. I'm joining this from Abuja. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. Alamo Molikat, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Alamo Molikat. Yeah, hello. Good morning, Hall. Good morning. Yeah, this is Alamo Molikat. I'm connecting from Lagos State. I work with um, WK Hitu and Co, a law firm in Lagos here. Yeah. I work as the administrative officer at the law firm. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome, madam. It's good to have you on board. Mr. Sani Ozegbe, if you are there, you can uh, introduce yourself now, sir. Uh, good morning, moderator. Good morning, everyone in the house. Good morning. My name is Sani. I uh, work with the Nigeria Police Force. I'm a police officer. I'm connecting you from Lagos. I'm on the road, sir. You are welcome, sir. Thank I you. want to believe um, we have um, taken all the introduction of um, participants who are connected, but if there's anyone who is yet to introduce his or herself, can that person quickly do that within the next 30 seconds, please? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm calling uh, from an abrasive project. Thank you. Yeah. You are welcome, sir. Mr. Celeste will be. Um, Ebunu Hajara, please, you can uh, move the microphone and do your introduction uh, once again. Let's see if your connection is all right. <laughs> Your microphone is still muted. Your microphone is muted. Please unmute it. Unmute it. Sir, I will advise you to remove, your, remove, that your, remove that your earpiece that and your use your device directly. Use yes. All right. All right. You can hear me now, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Yes, I and Ayara, we are both on the Zoom together, but at the moment she's seeing a patient. I'm considering working with Riga Dental Clinic in Abuja, yeah. Who says on four? All right. It's good uh, right. to you. have you on board. It's so good uh, you stand, to have you, you on board. You're standing in for her right. today. Stand, we believe the next uh, induction will be having. You will be standing for yourself. will be having. You will be standing for yourself. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. All right, thank all you. Right. Once again, um, yes. you are all welcome. All right, us. once again, um, you hello, are all welcome. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, hello, sir. My name is Olukayo de Lawori. Okay. I work for I, I work for Triple E Systems Associates Limited Lagos. I'm the DGM Governmental Affairs and Marketing. I'm connecting from Abuja right now. I'm, I'm You're welcome, sir. Thank You're you so welcome, much. sir. And it's good to have you on board. Thank Once you so again, much. Um, you are all welcome, and it's good to have um, every one of you here on board today. It gladdens my heart whenever we are having an induction like this. And um, I found out that we are having participants from all walks of life, not just those who studied administration or whose assign primary assignment is only limited to administration. Because here in Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, we believe that in whatever we are doing, whatever position or whatever field we find ourselves in life, it is advisable we have a little knowledge of management and administration. Because even right from our immediate home, there is need for management principle, a little management and administrative um, discipline in us. 
because as a father, as a husband, as a wife, if we don't have uh, some managerial principle in, in us, we are bound to fail. So it's, I'm always happy whenever we are having gathering and I see people from all walks of life, from different fields, from um, different um, endeavor, because I believe whenever we are gathered like this, we are here to share experience. It's not that we, we are not here to just teach is not in existence. No, we are here to remind ourselves about something that has been in existence, that has been around us, but we are, we are not paying attention to. On that note, I want to welcome all of you once again, and I want to congratulate you in advance. A part of um, the journey of it. And um, to all the registrars of higher institution who are present here with us, I want to believe that after this uh, session, we are going to have a mutual uh, discussion with um, the registrar of um, institution of learning who are connected here. Let's see how the institute can have a collaboration with your institution to have almost all your academic and non-academic staff on board and let's see if it um uh, ways um if it's warrants to have um your students as well under the student umbrella of student membership of the institute we will be happy to have um, a um, discussion with you and um while we move ahead i believe um in the course of um today's uh, program the registrar has um, a lot to tell us. And I believe after today's um, induction, after the session, we'll be able to take it up um, from there. Once again, you are all welcome. And the next um, agenda of today now is um, the opening address of um, the Honorable Registrar of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, who is also double serving as um, the country director for African Institute of strategic managers in persons of Dr. Abdullah Jibri Salu, who is presently connecting with us from Lokoja, the capital of um, Kogi State. Mr. Registrar, sir, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Abubakar. You're welcome, sir. I want to share it on the screen. I could remember when the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria started in the, the year 2009, and I was registered as number 001. I told myself then that when God created man, man was alone. And today we have over 7.8 billion people across the globe. In the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, we are over 8,000 at the moment. And the mandate given to the Institute is to have up to 10,000 members after which our bill shall be sent to the National Assembly to make us become a chartered body, but the membership will no longer be by experience and qualifications, but by examinations. At the moment, we have every member in every nook and cranny of the country. And welcome to this August gathering in the month of July. My lost spiritual and temporal distinguished fellows and members of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators from African Institute of Strategic Managers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am indeed highly honored and privileged to welcome you to this memorable induction exercise for fellows and membership 
for fellow and membership into the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, Home African Institute of Strategic Managers. This institute is registered under the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAP 59, Laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1990. I am therefore highly gratified at the response of many distinguished and eminent personages whose contributions and general understanding and conduct assisted in no small major. In view to elevating the Nigerian standard of work environment, Compatibly, our ability to improve in our day-to-day -day administrative and general management of our endeavors. It is in conjunction, therefore, with our modest approach of recognizing an individual or group of individuals whose earnest responsibilities are not quadrone by illusion or center ego on job performance and specifications that today's activity is born. Creditably, our Nigerian managers and administrators are in the Creditably, our Nigerian managers and administrators are in enviable cadres and canopies all over the world. It therefore suffices to ascertain hearing that this much celebrated achievement of Nigerian apparatus are geometrically based on talent of experiences generated from convocations of this nature. One of the things that is not left behind by our leadership is the cognizance ability to honor outwardly, deserving people due praises in their lifetimes and not accolades after their demise. It is here for a center stage of this institute that a certified manager needs training and retraining in order to be abreast with fundamental experimental dynamos of administrative realities of the time. This in other words, assisting to elevate the standard of one's ability in just a position with work value anywhere in the world. It is therefore our honor to inform you that the prestigious direct professional membership of the Institute will be given to deserving men and women whose socioeconomic lives are to a fire. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here as clusters which according to Potter are geographically proximate groups of interconnected enterprises and associated institutions in a particular field linked by commonality and complementarity. The synergy driven from this network is what confers competitive advantage to cluster model of industrialization, which is bred from basic understandings as this. What we gather today will be of immense use in actualizing our goals in our various efforts. Having membership of the Institute is a highly colored decoration, as we are having synergy with reputable international fora as this. Members are therefore prone to professional trainings, through meetings, seminars, conferences, and other related courses at minimal contributions within and outside Nigeria. Members are also prone to improve and develop the science of management in commerce, industry, and politics by maintaining investigation and research into the application of such entity. Members are equally given the secret of success in business and the study and practice of its ethical principles with a mandate to raise professional practice to its highest. You are therefore entitled to full color membership certificate given under the approval of the council. We are here together as brothers and sisters for in that way will our mission statement be actualized. I therefore wish that we pay attention in our overall exercise, for we believe that Nigeria can be first lifted in general administration within her polity by many of us who are seated here today, even as our Nigerian brothers are helping other nations. Why well, congratulating every one of you, distinguished members of this house, I thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for that. About yourself, Mr. Obakar. Some people are dis distracting us in the background. Thank you very much for that um, wonderful opening speech. If we listen carefully to the opening speech of um, the Honorable Registrar of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. 
it covers all that I've said earlier on with respect to the calibers of people, the people that we have from all walks of life in this, um, um, under the umbrella of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. And having you as a member does not just end there because we believe here in Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, that as brothers and sisters, we can come together in order to raise a professional practice to its highest by calling upon members year in, year out on training seminars and workshops within and outside Nigeria. And that is one of um, the primary objective of um, this great institute in order for us to be able to achieve that statement policy of raising professional practice to its highest. One house, please. While um, we are congratulating every one of you in advance for being part of um, the journey of professionalism of this uh, institute, irrespective of your field of study or your line of endeavor, like a testimony that we, we got from one of our members in the past who happens to be <clears throat> a medical director now in one of um, the government medical establishments in one of the Western states. As at the time she became a member of um, the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. She just became a member um, for being a member sake, not even knowing that what she has been longing for the certificate is going to be one of the criteria that is going to pave way for her to become, to achieve that her long um, awaited dream of becoming a medical director. Because like we all know, the position of medical director in a medical establishment today is not all about injection giving. It's not all about um, drugs administration, but it has to do with management slash administrative um, discipline. While they were screening for those who are qualified to take over, there were about three of them that are qualified. They were all having the same qualification, the same uh, professional qualification and that of um, even their field of studies. And when everything became uh, too, too tight, the screening um, committee now asks, is there anyone among you that have any management certificate, lo and behold, that our member now said, yes, she is a member of so, so, so professional body that she, became, she belongs to some years back. They now ask, why didn't you present the certificate? She was of the opinion that maybe since that is a managerial um, aspect, that is not going to be needed in the screening that they are doing. She was now given the grace in presenting the certificate. And after confirmation from the Institute that yes, she acquired the certificate from, the rest became history. And today she is the medical director of that establishment. What is this, this trying to tell us? That at times we should not wait for when we are in need of something before getting it. Because whatever we get, we have, and we don't need. Whenever we are in need of it, we just go and pick it. We will not start running Hector scatter to start looking for it then. That is why in some establishments today, some directors, some managers, they are afraid of training their subordinates because they are, what they are afraid of is nothing but 
the fear of losing them after training them. The fear of losing them to competitors after training them. Yes, if you try to put that into consideration and at the same time, try to consider the adverse effects of not training them and keeping them, I believe that is much greater than the latter. For keeping them and not training them is more dangerous than even training them and losing them. That is why in Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, we make sure training and retraining of our members is one of um, the key principle of the Institute. Because your PhD, your academic qualification, 100 years to come still remain your PhD, nothing has changed. But if you claim to belong to a professional body, after three, four, five years, you are presenting the same certificates of um, membership. There is, it is expected that certificate of trainings and seminars attended under the umbrella of the same institute where you are presenting their membership um, certificate should also be presented alongside with it. That is what differentiates a professional institution and other circular institution. On that note, I will now move to the next um, agenda, which is the paper presentation on the, today's um, workshop on the roles of a professional managers in a dynamic environment, an environment that is hostile and cluster. As a manager, what are you supposed to do? Are you the manager that whenever there is a tsunami, a flood, which you cannot control, are you the one that will give in to the flood for your organization to go with it? Or you will be the type of manager that will build a ship, even if you cannot control the storm, but you build a ship that will help you to navigate through the storm. For instance, the coming of COVID-19, many establishments suffers a big blow from it. Why some are waxing stronger, why some may not be back again. If you are a manager in that kind of establishment that is finding it difficult to come back after the pandemic, will you also fold your hands and look and tell them there is nothing you can do or you will be the type of manager that even though you don't have control over what has happened, but you should be able to navigate through and also restructure your organization in order to keep into the new normals that is facing us today. I told you earlier on that during the period of lockdown, when other institutes were not even clear about how they could move forward, the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria quickly swung into action and what we did then, barely a month after the lockdown, is to come up with virtual learning like what we are doing today. Though in the past, this kind of um, learning has not been fully embraced in this part of the country due to one challenges or the other. Though this bottleneck has not been removed, but we are also trying to manage around it. One of them is network, NEPA failure and uh, what have you. But we are also trying to navigate around it. As a manager, are you the type that will give in to whatever the threats outside your own control post to you or you will be the type that will be able to navigate through? This is not going to be a lecture before even the lecture. And at this junction, I would like to urge us all to leave whatever it is that we know behind. Let's learn together. I believe this section is going to be interactive. I want us to unlearn ourselves 
so that we can learn and relearn. Let's unlearn ourselves so that we can learn and relearn. In the next one hour or less than that, the registrar of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria is going to take us through the paper of today's um, induction on the roles of a professional managers in a dynamic environment. Mr. Registrar, sir, over to you. Your microphone, sir. Okay, just give me one minute to join you. All right. Let's exercise patience while he try to share the screen with us for easy discussion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me well? Yes, can I can hear, hear you. you. Okay, okay. Hear you. Let us uh, unmute our microphone. I hear you. Let us all uh, unmute our microphone. Because we don't want distraction. Please do that. Before I go into the business of uh, today, I would like us to think uh, outside the box as professional managers. It is good to always think outside the box. If possible, you shatter the box. <laughs> That's good. Because uh, we are conceptual thinkers. That's true. The sky should be our starting point, not our limits. <laughs> Let us uh, hope you are your your pen is there. I want us to. Okay, there's no need. Let me share it on the screen, so that. Uh, who can uh, provide answers. Okay. Hope you are, you are seeing it on the screen. Yes, you can see. Okay, there are six eggs in a basket. And six people took each egg, yet we have an egg remaining in the basket. Who can tell me what happened there? If you have the answer, unmute and let us know. Six it means one person did not take. For six people, and after taking each uh, an egg, we have an egg remaining in the basket. It means one person dropped his egg. Did not take the egg at all. No, one person dropped his egg. And uh, the, that shows uh, five people took uh, the egg and uh, one person did not carry his own. Is that what you're trying to tell us, sir? No. Okay, what happened? I said it, it means that the six people took and one person dropped. Yeah. Yeah, it means one person here? took the basket. Yeah? One person took with the basket. A round of applause for her. One person decided to take the egg with her, the basket. Yeah, that is a good one. One person took uh, his egg with the basket. That is why we have uh, an egg remaining uh, 
in, in the, the basket. basket. Okay. Okay. Is this a case study? Is there any, any way out again? Who can there? Uh, any, any other way out? Or no way? Okay. Then let us move to the second one. Since this one was, uh, it was uh, sharply answered. And uh, we'll move to the second one. One house, please. Okay. Yeah, we have the second uh, question. You are driving down the road in your car on a wide stormy night. When you pass by a bus stop and you see three people waiting for the bus, one of them is an old lady who looks as if she's about to die. The second person is an old friend who once saved your life. While the third person is the perfect partner you have been dreaming about. Knowing that uh, there can only be one passenger in your car, whom would you choose? There can only be one passenger in your car. Whom will you choose? Hello. Uh, I the the one person, can I talk? The one the person that saved my life. life. Okay, so are, you, are you a medical doctor? No, I mean, I'm an administrator. <laughs> I'll choose okay. the person that saved my life. Okay, the person that saved your life, you have seen that as a payback period, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, you have tried, but you have not. Uh, Hello. In a, in a situation like this, Hello. You have to balance all competing goals. One of the yes. Are, what, you what, what, Hello. What? Hello. Hello. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry i Without uh, pushing, pulling down the other. Now here we you have an old friend who once saved your life, an old woman that uh, looks as if she would die, she could die any moment, and uh, the future partner you have been dreaming about. You remember, opportunity loss cannot be regained. So what uh, are you going to do as a professional manager? You, you take the woman first who wants to die to the hospital. Uh, okay. you, you can always you can always meet. The other two people later. So as a as a wise manager, that that should be the first. That, that should, should be your organization. If you have uh, three products and uh, having uh, issues, for you to uh, sell in one, you have to kill the other ones. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, my go on. Hello. Go on. Okay, I would add, I would ask my friend to take the my friend who once saved my life to take yeah. the old woman to an hospital okay. while i stay back with the perfect partner that i've been dreaming about okay okay um, okay that means your friends uh, your friend will take the old woman to the hospital or to her house to and the uh, hospital okay, okay to the hospital <laughs> hey, if, if, if what you wanted was to get to her house so that the weather will not affect her Ah, uh, okay. Yes, man. <laughs> so that is that. And it's a good one. A round of applause for her. It is a case study. So, and uh, in, uh, you are you, you you want to uh, based on the situation, the future partner. If you lose her now, you may not see her again. So you have decided to move on. Your friend, let your friend. Uh, you assume you have assumed down that your friend can drive. So you have given him the key. To take the old lady to uh, to the house while uh, waiting for the next available bus, 
I'm just in with uh, your, the future partner you have been dreaming about. You can see that uh, that can even take uh, till uh, next week there, yeah, and you will not get <laughs> So let us come back to the theme of today's induction. That is a uh, title role of professional managers in a dynamic environment. What will a manager do in an environment that is always hostile and clustered? Should we quit, adjust, or we adapt? We shall know that in the course of uh, today's presentation. But before that, I would like to know who the first management consultant on earth was. Who was the first management consultant on earth? You can uh, unmute and uh, let me know. Adam. No, sir. Adam was Adam. the first man. He couldn't have uh, advised somebody else. Adam. On the what to do. Eve. Ma? It was Eve. No, Eve. Ma? No, ma. Eve. We have pastors, <laughs> reverend among us. They should give us this a better answer. Moses. The Bible it was Moses. Moses. No, not Moses, ma. <laughs> But you are, you, 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 when the advice was given to Moses, let me give you an expo now. <laughs> okay, Moses' father-in-law. Okay, round of applause for you. <laughs> Jethro. Jethro. <laughs> the Jethro came and met Moses, operating as a one-man manager. Moses was running the alone. 365 days, no leave, no transfer. Just the way some of our managers are operating today. You see them, they don't go and live year in, year out. They are sitting uh, in one place. Moses was operating that way. It was when the father in law Jethro came and observed the way he was doing. He called him, son in law, if you continue this way, you wear out easily. You go home and become useless to my daughter. Why not choose among men leaders? Teach them laws and ordinances. Let them be adjudicating over lesser matter. Why you, Moses, will be giving approvals? That advice by Jethro turns out to be the first advice given by the first management consultant on earth. You can see that uh, he has taught Moses all about uh, the modern and traditional functions of management. He has taught us about planning, directing, budgeting, staffing, and uh, the post has has been taken care of. But today, we still have many people operating like Moses. How many of you are still operating in that uh, 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 old uh, 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 archaic uh, method? Are you, what are you afraid of? Because there are some superiors in the organization. It is when they send their subordinates out that uh, they will do the needful. What are you afraid of? You don't believe that there is God? If one door did not, uh, does not close, how would you open another one? Remember that uh, a time will come, you will no longer be strong to do what you are doing now. You need to have what we call succession, succession planning. When you fail to plan, you plan to fail. When you fail to plan, you stink. And when you stink, you sink. So that advice, was given to Moses by Jethro. As a professional manager, we are like the hub that rolls the wheel. We are like the hub that rolls the wheel. Without us, all other managerial functions are useless. We are the last to be fired in any organization. At times, we die with the organization. <laughs> That is why we must have the little knowledge of everything. Resources are scarce and has to be allocated optimally. Optimal allocation of scarce resources. We have the aims of management, the men, machines, money, materials, methods, and the market. Let me take four for the purpose of uh, this uh, presentation. The man, as a professional manager, you must have the right people doing the right things. The right people doing things rightly. 
Is that the right people to do the right jobs? Putting a round peg in the round holes, and round holes in a, and square pegs in square holes. Not the opposite. Round pegs in square holes, and square pegs in a, in round holes. That is a case study. You can relate it to any environment. <laughs> The public sectors, the private sectors, and uh, what have you. <laughs> when you get people, not as a result of meritocracy, but uh, what I term the grandfather father son relationship, you are bound to fail. Man, no man. The people, those working under you, must have the technical know how. They must have the experience, the exposures, and what have you to move the organization to the next level. You must understand the attitudes, their behaviors, conduct of the people working under you. So that when it comes to delegation, you delegate to those you know that can deliver, those you know that uh, can help you free up uh, time. Mm -hmm. Then another aim I would like to go into is that of money, money, money. Money answered uh, all things according to the Bible. It is also there in the Quran that money and children are the beauty of this world in Surah to Kaf. That is why we believe that the life wire of every organization must be finance. That is why the Companies and Allied Matters Act of 1990 stated that all information that will assist users of accounting statement in the file in the, in the, the, that will assist users of a, a, a financial statement in a, a, an understanding manner must be stated in a clear logical way for all to see. In assessing the viability, liquidity, profitability of a company must be stated in a clear, logical, and understanding manner. We have what we call users of accounting information. The stakeholders are there, or the, the, the stakeholders are there. We have uh, the employees for salaries, wages, and other personal costs. So how much is uh, expected, much is given. If you don't pay them well, you don't expect them to perform magic. They will be groveling on the job. It could lead to both the job uh, burnout. As a result of uh, stresses, you can never imagine. It could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be psychological, and what have you. Just let us take Nigeria. <laughs> I'm sorry, my analysis is going to be for the purpose of this lecture only. <laughs> let us take Nigeria as a case study now. How many public servants or how many workers are happy doing their jobs at the moment? When the so-called minimum wage cannot buy you a bag of rice at the end of the day. The minimum wage according to the government uh, angle is 30,000. And then some states are paying in percentages. And you want to stop corruption. That is another case study. There could be physical stress, emotional stress, and counterproductivity. Because you have to, whatever you are giving, uh, the, uh, your, your, uh, the workers must be in parity with the economy. Anything less than that, it shows that uh, whatever policy you are coming, you are coming, you are you are coming to deliver will be dead on arrival. We are talking of thirty thousand here. There are some states uh, at the end of the month. You see all deductions and all manners of deductions. You see somebody, somebody earning uh, not even up to 10,000. What are you going to do with that? Although 
we know that uh, things are very, these times are hard. That is why as a professional manager, we must not put our heads in one basket. We must have an alternatives, have an option B. Always uh, have your option B ready, activate them. Just like in Japan, we have what we call the 888 formulas. Eight hours for your paid employment. You do things that are reasonably, wholly, and exclusively for the organization. Another eight hours for your PPs. That is private practice. Even the government angle, you can be you can be a public servant at the same time. You can be be a farmer. It's like that uh, rule has been amended recently, where you can also do your businesses. That is the eight eight. Then the last eight is a you use that uh, between your friends and uh, relations and uh, rejuvenate yourself by resting uh, to be on uh, the stronger side. Because when you rest, well, you'll be very strong to move on to the, until the next day. So the life way of every organization is finance. Then there are employees to whom much is expected, much is given. There are other stakeholders in our business, providers of uh, capital. They are interested in their dividends and their interest. Government is also a stakeholder in our business for tax. Then uh, the last is uh, the business itself for maintenance and expansion. That is why, as a professional manager, you must understand the flow of fund in and out of your organization, how the cash is generated and utilized. The third M I would like us to go into is that of materials. Materials. We have three stock level in the warehouse. Three stock level in the warehouse. We have uh, the minimum uh, level, the maximum level, and the other level. <coughs> Sorry, Nepa just uh, did their own. <laughs> okay, the PSCN took the light, but uh, they've not stopped me from talking, depending when uh, it is restored. So the Providers at the, the, the stock levels. The, the other level is a level which you must always initiate action for fresh supply. That is the point, the equilibrium, the margin of safety. Don't allow it to go too up or too uh, low. At that point, you need the uh, supplies. That is the other level. The level you must always initiate action for fresh supplies. Then the minimum uh, level is also there. The minimum uh, level is the level which stock must not be allowed to fall below. The level stocks must not be allowed to fall below. When you allow your, when you are operating at a, a minimum level, you are in trouble. You are in trouble if you are operating at that level. The minimum level is not good for your business or for, or for your organization. If you allow your stock to fall below before initiating action for fresh supply, then you are looking for troubles. You be faced with, with so many challenges. Just like before COVID-19, <clears throat> no one anticipated that the, the whole uh, wide world would be in total lo lockdown. But it happened, it came to pass. If you are that manager that is operating at the minimum level, what do you think will become of your company by now?
the, the, the wide world was in total lockdown. And you are, you are operating at a minimum level. There is no how you could have uh, gotten a fresh stock. That shows that there are disabilities that could be associated with, that, uh, with not managing your stock appropriately. That could lead to loss of uh, goodwill, loss of customers. It, uh, loss of, it can even lead to the closure of your organization. So by the time your customers start moving from uh, to other your competitors to get uh, uh, their problem solved, then uh, not all of them will come back to you. Your goodwill has been tampered with. Loss of customers. I do production. Who will pay for the lost hours? That will become a case study. If you are not careful, that will make you to be, find yourself in the state of uh, <coughs> insolvency. Because by the time you are not producing, your customers are going uh, helter skelter and uh, everything. You can no longer pay for, service, for loan obtained or services rendered. And an official receiver will be appointed to know why you are in that state. Is it as a result of your recklessness or carelessness in your management of affairs? All forces beyond your control. There will be a uh, public examination. And uh, you know what that uh, the rest will be history. That is minimum stock level. Then the maximum stock level is also the level you should not allow your stock to rise above. Maybe your capacity for the month is uh, 50,000 units. And uh, you are stocking up to 500,000 units for 10 months. Are you not tying down the cost of uh, the, uh, your capital? That will lead to privileges, breakages, and what have you. There are disadvantages. Then another M, which is the last I will talk about, is that of uh, machines. Machines. We're in the world of competition. We're in the 21st century. Your machines have to be in line with modern specifications. Use machines that are in line with modern applications, not machines that are archaic in nature. Remember, you have competitors who are not ready to go to bed until you're already sleeping. Why do you think that, uh, how, wh wh you can see that they, when if organize, some organizations want to recruit, they will look for someone with 20 years experience. Where do you think those ones will come from? from your competitors. That is why you should understand that uh, competition is key. Some people are not going, don't go to bed until your competitors are already sleeping. Look at in 1986, when 7-Up launched the 12 the Uresa, the difference is clear. And it was uh, one of the state of the art uh, auto then. Many people wanted to win a, a Deurisa then, and they were busy consuming seven up. Coca-Cola market share dropped. And when they saw that, they came up with a, an enlightenment campaign using NAVDAC on the danger of sugar. But by the year 2010, over 10 million Nigerians will be having diabetes. That was how they killed uh, the market share of Coca-Cola products. <laughs> Around 1996, when I was uh, in Lagos, there was this uh, bottle, uh, 50 CL bottle that came up too by Pepsi Mirinda Company. We called that a robot in those days. It was sold the same price of uh, 35 CL of Coca-Cola products. And you know customers want value for whatever they are spending. Or about 50 CL for 15 Naira. And uh, Coca-Cola 35 CL for the same 15 Naira. Most of us uh, 
decided to, we were going for Coca, uh, Pepsi, uh, Pepsi and uh, Mirinda, and the market share of uh, Coca-Cola suffered. That was when they went back to the drawing board and came up with uh, the 25 CL bottle. It was called uh, Solo by those of us in Lagos then, Solo. It was sold for 25 uh, Naira. They, they did that to regain their market share. At least those of us that were born in the 70s, we, could, we can attest to the fact that uh, at that time, there was, uh, at least we came up to meet our parents, buying things in, uh, in Jumbo Park. Jumbo Parks was the order of the day. Like the Omo used to be in a very big and uh, long uh, carton. There was this uh, other thing, uh, even the milk too, used to be in uh, the normal, like uh, this thing, Bonvita and all these other things. So there was this elephant tooth detergent then, but uh, when uh, area and clean came up, they noticed that uh, not everyone could afford that. It was then uh, they started producing in such it, and it was sold for five naira or so then. Just the same way, these people came on board too. Was it a uh, three crown? This uh, such it make? Cowbell. Okay, thank you. Cowbell too came on board. The picnic and uh, these other ones were laughing at them. So how can uh, somebody come to the market and think that he will beat us to eat the game? We that have spent decades here and they are coming selling at uh, maybe five, five naira then. But uh, believe you me, within a short uh, span, they covered their market share. The, the first year, they, they got over 10 million uh, people. 10 million subscribers to their business. Imagine 10 million people consuming something of five naira, 10 naira every day. If you're that businessman, won't you be encouraged? <laughs> but today you can see now, little beginning <laughs> matters a lot. <laughs> Many businesses are coming up that way. If you are doing something, you come down to the level that people understand you. Just like uh, when uh, MT, uh, Etel and uh, MTN started in year 2001, they made us believe that per second billing was not feasible. It was one glow came on board and uh, started uh, exchanging the uh, people's line, MTN and uh, Econet with a uh, glow free glow line. And they thought it was uh, per second. So that was when uh, they hurriedly repackaged themselves. I'll give it to Nigeria. That is why anything mono is very, very evil. My <laughs> friend will tell you that. Uh, <laughs> just like a one having a. <laughs> let me leave that. <laughs> we understand. Carry on, sir. Has anything one is evil? Sir. It's Matao. Okay, ma. Let me leave Matao for Matao. Carry on. Carry on. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, that some um, let some local will tell you that a man with one eye is very close to blindness. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sending anyone to go and add more. It's in the uh, <laughs> just for the purpose of this lecture alone, please. <laughs> please <laughs> sit, man. Okay. Now I'm gonna start another war in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see that uh, we've taken care of the six times. And uh, the one hour given to me, <coughs> excuse me, will not be enough, but uh, since uh, everything is uh, on ground, so we are going to do justice to that. Let us come back to the theme of today's induction, role of uh, professional managers in a dynamic environment. I believe okay. you have seen that uh, you all have uh, your own copy with you. But uh, let us do that here. I'm sharing it on the screen now. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry. Over here, Nick. Just funny. Um. Okay. Sorry. 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 Sorry.
What is uh, management? From the introduction so far, I could see that uh, we have many people from different backgrounds. Different background. And uh, it is good for us to come down and uh, break everything for our understanding. And to some of us in the house, it is uh, a refresher for us too. That is why this is an adult session. And uh, I would like to make it interactive. If you feel an, at any material in time, at uh, any particular time, you can uh, unmute and ship in one or two things. At least we are here to learn from one another. What is uh, management? Management. <coughs> My own layman's uh, definition is one, two or more people come together to roll a stone. Management has taken place. When you come, I come and we plan something that is achievable, that is measurable, that is uh, specific, that has a time bound, which can be evaluated and reviewed, then management has taken place. Management is a universal phenomenon. It is a very popular and widely used term. All organizations, business, political, cultural, or social are involved in management because it is the management which helps and directs the various efforts towards a definite purpose. According to Harold Coons, management is an art of getting things done through and with the people in a formally organized groups. When getting things done through people in an organized group, it shows that management has taken place. It is an art of creating an environment in which people can perform <coughs> and individual can cooperate towards attainment of group goals. When people come together to perform towards the superordinate goals, it shows that management has taken place. According to F. Taylor, management is an art of knowing what to do. When you know what to do, there should be proper definition of what to do how to do, when to do, when are you going to do? That is the timing. What to do, it has to be specific. When to do, has to do with uh, the timing and see that it is done in the best and cheapest way. Value analysis and value engineering. Do the, do, do, there should be quality without necessarily affecting the, 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 the price. Therefore, we can say that good management includes both being effective and uh, efficient. Being effective means doing the appropriate task, fitting the square pegs in square holes and round pegs in round holes. Being efficient means doing the task correctly, at least possible cost without minimum waste, without minimum uh, wastages of resources. That is the definition of management. We bring people together to do things voluntarily without coercing them. Shows how great you are as a good leader. Because a good leader is one that people are willing to do things for without the use of force. Then the levels of management, we have the top level, the middle level, and uh, the low level. The top level, that is the administrative level. That is the executive level. But those are the, the, uh, the, the upper echelons. Then the middle level management, uh, management they are the executors. Executing the, the policies in line with the mandate of uh, the strategic managers. Then the low level are the supervisors, the operative staffs, first line managers. You can see the chart here. The top, they are on top. Executing, coaching, change management, leadership, delegation and empowerment, etc. Then the middle level, problem solving. 
they must make sure that that is where you have the head of uh, the top level. That is where you have the strategic managers, the board of the chairman, board of directors, down to the general managers. That is the administrative manager. Then the middle level, that is where you have the, the line managers. We call that the tactical managers. They are the problem solver. They are the ones to see that uh, whatever goal that is uh, resources that will go with goal accomplishment must be in parity. Give you the, the tools to deliver. The problem, uh, they are problem solvers, team builders, talent development. They train you on the job or off the job and their performance uh, management. They look at your performance, where they uh, and, uh, uh, promote you, uh, they send you on the job. They use the carrot and uh, stick approach. Why the low level? Here now we have uh, the emotional uh, intelligence and coaching for performance. You have the supervisors here to make sure that uh, they do the right things or do things rightly. The top level management consists of board of directors, chief executive, or managing directors. The top management is the ultimate source of authority and it manages goals and policies for an enterprise. It devotes more time on planning and coordinating functions. The role of top management can be summarized as follows. Top management lays down the objectives and broad policies of uh, the enterprise. They are the conceptual thinkers. They think outside the boss and if possible, chatter the boss for the organization to grow. That is why you see people at this level having gray hairs, even when they are still in their early 40s. <laughs> their head is always bringing out smokes <laughs> because they don't go to bed there as at when you. They are always thinking, what if I do this tomorrow? Everything, what if I change it to this other one? What is not working in the organization? Am I having the right people to do the right jobs? Then and so many, so many, so many questions. They have to plan. They are the strategic uh, managers. Then uh, to issue necessary instructions for operation of department budget, procedures, schedules. They must make sure that resources are in parity with the set uh, agendas. Prepare strategic plan and policies for the enterprise, they must uh, understand the vision and the mission. What are we out to achieve at the moment? And where do we want, where are we going to be in future? The mission and the vision statement must be analyzed. Appoint the executives for middle level, that is the departmental managers. They get the right people to do the right jobs controls and coordinate the activities of all departments. They bring them together under one umbrella. They are also responsible for maintaining a contact with the outside world. Provides guidance and direction to the tactical managers. The top management is also responsible towards the shareholders. Because remember I told you earlier, the stakeholders of every business, we have the employees, the providers of capital. Here they are talking of shareholders. The providers of capital are interested in the dividends and interest. Then the middle level manager, that is the tactical uh, managers. Here now they execute uh, the plans of the organization in accordance with the policy and directives of the top management. You can see they do that. They make sure that uh, whatever that is discussed at the top uh, level, strategic uh, level, is carried out. They break it down into departments. The account manager will tell the uh, his, uh, subordinate what is expected of uh, the department. The HR will do the needful. The purchasing will do the needful. Then uh, and so many others. They make plans for the subunit of the organization as a tactical manager. You must, uh, you are vested with uh, making plans for your, your, for your unit. 
participate in employment and training of lower level manage management. You train them on the job. Let them understand what uh, to do. Interpret and explain policies from top level management to lower level. Always do that. Be responsible for coordinating the activities within the division or department. You must coordinate uh, to make sure that uh, you are meeting up with uh, the set uh, targets. Also send uh, important report and other important data to top level management. You send your report on time. Let uh, the top uh, level uh, deal with that. Evaluate performance of junior managers. Evaluate the people working under you. Recommend them for trainings. We motivate them. Delegate uh, functions to them. When you delegate to some subordinate, those subordinates will feel like who, who work like an idiot in the organization. Sorry to use that uh, language because they will believe that uh, they are doing the superior's job and uh, they will work as if there will be no tomorrow. Motivate them. When you delegate, you are also motivating because delegation and uh, motivation is not all about giving cash, money, money. But to us in Africa, motivation is, uh, <laughs> is what is coming in. But you need to grow too. You, you need to aspire to be in the superior's position when you no longer be in that organization. They are also responsible for inspiring lower level managers towards better performance. Uh, then they will move to low, lower level management. They are the, the, the supervisors, the sectional heads, the superintendents of the organization. And their roles include assigning of jobs and tasks to various workers. You can see that uh, they decentralize the jobs of the de department. They assign to various workers. They guide and instruct workers for day-to-day -day activities. You guide them on day-to-day -day activities. Today, this is what management wants. Tomorrow, this is how we are going to do it. This is the quality we are expecting. This is the quantity. Then at the end of the day, you should be able to know if uh, there are deviations and how deviations can be corrected. They are also entrusted with the responsibility of maintaining good relations in the organization. They communicate workers' problems, suggestions, and recommendatory appeal to the higher level management and objectives to the workers and higher level goals and objectives to the workers. The management will tell you what so, 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 so numbers of uh, units produced today, then this is uh, what it takes to do it. Then you will not tell them, oh, your staff are not happy about it. This is what they want. They want their uh, bonuses, their allowances, or if possible, have a canteen for them. Let them, because at times when you give, uh, you pay them uh, all at once at the end of the month, most especially for those in the, in the factories. They will go and squander their money and uh, will start uh, misbehaving. I could remember when I was uh, working with one uh, Indian company in Lagos. They have a canteen inside the premises. Whereby you go there to eat, the uh, madam in charge of the canteen will be booking you. At the end of the month, at first, uh, this thing, they will deduct that, whatever that uh, will be deductible before you can uh, uh, be given uh, your net. So you can see that uh, if you uh, create such uh, this thing, motivation, if you motivate them in such a way, while they are working, they should not be hungry. You can subsidize that in such a way that uh, they will not uh, feel the much uh, impact. They help uh, to solve uh, the grievances of workers. You said to the grievances of the people working under you. Let them know that uh, they, they, they have to, they must synergize. Let it be a symbiotic uh, 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 arrangement. We must benefit from one another. Once a finished uh, product, it uh, should be raw materials for another person. They supervise and guide the way subordinates. They are responsible for providing a training to the workers. They arrange the necessary materials, machines, tools, for getting the things done. They prepare periodical reports about the performance of the workers. They ensure discipline in the enterprise. You can see the motivate workers have, talk, have uh, treated that already. They are, they are the image builders of the enterprise because they are in direct contact with the workers. Then we have the task of uh, professional managers. And one of that is providing a certain goal to the firm. Remember I told you earlier, 
that any tax that must be achieved must be smart or smarter in acronym. If a tax is not smart or smarter, it shows that somebody somewhere has set you up to fail. A delegated tax must be specific, it must be measurable, it must be achievable, it must be realistic, it must have a time bound which can be evaluated and reviewed. If a task has no proper definition, forget it. It must have a proper definition. What are you out to achieve? When are you to carry on the task? You must understand that as a professional manager. Is the, is the task an achievable one? What is the end result? What are the expectations? You must understand that too. How realistic is it? The resources given to, the, uh, uh, to do the job, is it in parity with the set agenda? You must understand that. Specific, smart. Is it measurable? You must have standards to follow. And uh, standard, actuals must be measure, measured against standard to see for deviations. And now deviations can be corrected. It must also have a time bound, time bound, which can be evaluated and reviewed. I would like to dwell on uh, time a little bit. Time management. As a professional manager, you must be an uh, effective uh, time manager. Always remember that. You must manage your time accurately. Remember, we have an equal amount of time, which is the 24 hours every day. Yet many of us complain of no time. You don't have time for your families. You don't have time for your children. You don't have time to, uh, for, your, for, your, for your peepees. Just uh, as in the case uh, in, uh, in Japan, where they do the 888. The very day you start working should be the day you plan for your retirement. Not when you are about to go. You start rushing helter skelter. It will weigh you down and it will affect your health because there is no magic you can perform at that time. But it's something you should do gradually and be happy doing it. Now that uh, I'm here today as uh, the registrar and uh, I had, uh, the resource person also. I can proudly, proudly tell you that I'm also a farmer too. You have to diversify. Don't put your heads in one basket. And uh, if you don't manage your time very well, you cannot be here, there, and uh, do other things. We have equal amount of time, which is the 24 hours, yet you complain of no time. A good manager should be able to be an effective uh, manager, effective time manager. Let us uh, look at the principles of time management. At least I will pick uh, five principles. Like one of that is a principle of uh, planning. Principle, principle of planning. When you fail to plan, you plan to fail. When you fail to plan, you stink. And when you stink, you sink. You have to plan what to do, how to do, when to do, and see that it is done in the best, uh, uh, in the best way. Here they are telling us of a principle of uh, planning. You have to plan effectively, accurately. Today is uh, at least uh, tomorrow. If you want to do, let me take it uh, in, a, in a layman's way. Like you are going to the office on Monday, tomorrow Sunday now, the principle of planning is telling us that uh, by tomorrow, you should be able to have uh, a to-do list of what is to be done here uh, on Monday. You have a schedule, what to do. On Monday morning, from 8 o'clock to 8.30, I should be able to be on my table to clear the workload. From 8.30 to 9 o'clock, I should be able to meet up with uh, my
my subordinates to know if they are facing difficulties on the job and see how you can uh, correct them or you uh, to see where they are having complaints <coughs> or to, to note what is making militating against uh, uh, their operations. Then 10 o'clock to maybe two o'clock, you are meeting with your customers to see that they are happy. They can recommend the organization to, your, uh, to others. Address their grievances. Then it's a way of uh, having uh, what to do. The, uh, the, that, I call that the budget of your time. If you don't have uh, the budget of your time, then uh, whatever you stand for is dead on arrival. So principle of planning. Another principle is to, is to and I, another principle is to, is to, is to filter them. Filter what uh, you have in your to-do list. We call that uh, organize and prioritize. Organize and prioritize what you have in your to-do list, what you have planned. You should know that, uh, and in organizing and uh, prioritizing your time, you should be able to know the ones that are important and the ones that are urgent. Remember, the most important, the, those tasks that are important will not be the most urgent task in the organization. Don't waste your time on them. Go straight and do prioritize on the urgent ones. The most urgent tasks should be treated, but don't procrastinate. To so such a time, the urgent task could become problematic. The important task could become pro problematic for you to handle. Organize and uh, prioritize. Then also have uh, the, another principle is the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule, that is uh, what we call Pareto principle. You can see that uh, the 80-20 rule, when applied to work, means that approximately 20% of your hard work produces 80% uh, results. 20% of your hard work produces 80% result. If you are a marketer now, you put your market, uh, you market on the social media, you may get up to 10,000 people that may subscribe before the end of the month. What you need from that is that is 20%. If you can hit 20% of your 100%, and from that 20%, then you hit 80%. Result, it shows that you are good at what you are doing. That is what Pareto is trying to tell us here, the Pareto principle, that 80%, uh, the 80-20 rule, when applied to work, means that uh, approximately 20% of your hard work produces 80% uh, results. Then another principle, is for us to do one thing at a time. Do one thing at a time. If you want to solve two masters, you must be ready to lie to one. There is no how you may want to do the two at the same time that you will not be distracted. You may end up starting all over. That is why one at a time. Don't try to be multitasking. If you have that, if you have such an urgent task to accomplish, make sure you go ahead and finish with that before approaching another urgency. Or else, the whole thing you stand for will be dead on arrival. Then another one again is uh, avoid distraction. Always avoid distractions. For you to be an effective time manager, you must avoid distractions. It is there in the Bible that if your house will cause you sorrow, cut it off. 
that friend, that friend that will make you not to achieve the end result, do away with that friend. Cut him off. I remember, although I understand that women know how to do that very well. <laughs> that man that is always coming to take your husband out. <laughs> The way that uh, it's not productive. It's not going to bring Shishi from that place to contribute to the home front. I know that uh, they are always aggressive to such people. <laughs> By the time you greet them with money and they ask you what is good about the money, you know, man, you may not hear. Honorable, honorable register, sir. That's part of marketing. Sir? That's marketing, sir. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So you notice that uh, the man may not want to come there tomorrow. So you, you, you better go and wait for you at the, the normal place. So that is why you notice that uh, you always uh, avoid distractions. Avoid distractions. Gather the willpower to log off your social media account when you are on the job. By the time you are doing something and you are pinging your doing one or two things, you are showing the whole world. That is why somebody will tell you that uh, he went to an hospital for operation and they brought the baby doctor to come and operate him. He vehemently denied, uh, re uh, refused, that the person, should, the guy should not be the one <laughs> to carry on the, that he may not want uh, a kindergarten guy that may be using uh, his organs for a kind of uh, something, showing the whole world that he's doing his work. <laughs> so you notice that uh, you must gather the willpower to log off your social media account. You must, uh, you have to do things where if you, are, if you work in a cubicle, your phone, you, will put, you should put it in silence, make the world a quiet place. Now when, uh, you know, there are some phones that can wake the dead. <laughs> when it rings, yeah, the whole place will be the, uh, just like uh, the, uh, the other person that interrupted, I'm uh, and interrupt, uh, interrupted me earlier. You can see that I was disorganized. <laughs> I have to pause a bit to, uh, to unmute uh, the person first before they continue. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have to avoid the uh, distractions. Then another principle of uh, managing uh, your time uh, effectively it's a principle of a delegation. You have to delegate effectively. Delegate, when you delegate to your subordinates, you free up time. But make sure that you delegate to people that knows their job, people who can deliver. Not uh, delegating to one that you may be the you may you may be the one to do the job at the end of the day. And when you delegate very well, you free up time for yourself. You explore into the unknown. Don't behave like Moses before the coming of uh, Jethro. Moses was operating as a one-man manager. He was running things alone. 365 days, no leave, no transfer. Not until uh, Jethro came and uh, observed uh, his style. He now called him son-in-law. If you continue this way, you wear out easily. You go home and become useless to my daughter. Why not choose among men leaders? Teach them laws and ordinances. Let them be adjudicating over lesser matter while you be giving approvals. That is what they are telling us here. For you to be an effective time manager, you must uh, understand the principle of delegation. Delegate to people to free up their uh, time. Then uh, you also keep yourself healthy and stress-free. Learn to rest. You should not be working all uh, around the clock. All work and no play makes one a dull boy. So from time to time, go for at least uh, refresh yourself. You must rejuvenate. Then uh, you have another principle is for you to learn to say no. Learn to say no. Learn to say no. You know, remember the second principle. Principle of uh, organizing and uh, prioritizing. You have organized your jobs. You have prioritized the ones that are important uh, and the ones that uh, uh, you have grouped them by knowing the, the tax, those tasks that are important and the ones that are urgent. 
you are you go you go for the urgent ones first before coming for the important ones but don't procrastinate the important uh, ones to such a time it becomes problematic for you to handle so what you do in such situation is that so by the time you have an urgency at hand and your superior is trying to bring another urgency you have to explain to him in the language that uh, he will understand. Let him know, sir, this is uh, the job at hand now. And uh, management wants this report at so 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 hour. If I go ahead to this other, two other ones, it might affect my report. Come down and explain. Don't try to outshine him. Remember the first rule of the 48 laws of power. Never outshine your master by Robert Greene. Because you know he's your superior. You must talk to him in the language that you understand you. Let him understand. Except where you have a subordinate under you who can uh, handle those jobs. Then you can now delegate to them. And uh, you'll be rest assured that uh, they, they will deliver. If not, say no. Except if that urgent tax is no longer urgent but important. You step it down and go for the urgent one. Then uh, after I've taken the principles, another there's another thing I want us to invoke for us to maintain uh, effective uh, time management. We must invoke, invoke what I call the four Ds. Four Ds. Four Ds of time management. The first one is do. Do. Do it now. The second one is uh, delete, delete, delete the, the junks. The third one is to differ. You differ. That tax that is not, uh, uh, it is not urgent, but important, you differ. Then the last one is to delegate. If you have uh, an important task at hand, but it's not uh, urgent, what uh, should you do? Please, someone to unmute and contribute. You have an important tax, a tax that is not urgent, but important. What do you need to do? Defy. You defy it, thank you. You defy it. But in as much as you want to defy, you want that tax defied, you don't procrastinate. Do it uh, before it becomes uh, problematic for you to handle. If a task is very urgent, what uh, should we do? Remember, you are invoking the 40s now. A task that is urgent. Do it now. You do it do. now. Thank you. Do it now. You do it now. You do it now. Okay, if a task do it is now. Okay, thank you. If a task is neither urgent nor important, what should we do? You delete it. You delete it. That's like our main point. When you go through your email in the morning, you filter them. And when you filter, you notice that there's so many junks are there waiting for you. Then you delete them. Do a, you cross them. Can delete also them. delay, even if you don't want to delete, you can just delay it for a little time. And it is not important and it is not urgent. You delete. That is not my. Delay, it causes distractions. It causes distractions. Yes, it causes distraction. You know, I told you earlier in one of the principles avoid distractions. If your house will cause you sorrow, cut it off. Then, uh, if a task is uh, urgent and there's another urgent task, what do you do as a manager? You, de you delegate. You delegate. Thank you, sir. You delegate to your support. You delegate to those you believe eh, can handle the job. Well, I mean, the moderator is uh, is sending signal already, but uh, I'm pleading for 15 minutes. Let's see how we can uh, let us come back to the paper now. Okay, we have provided a certain task to the firm managing internal and external growth the micro and the macro, maintaining the organization efficiency, building an asset for the organization, being innovative, being innovative. Yet they are telling us to be creative. 
this creativity should be our watchword. Before now, I could remember when the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria started in the year 2009. We were printing posters, handbills. We moved from one ministry to the other, pasting our, our posters and sharing along. On Sundays, we moved from one church to the other, giving a creating awareness. But today, no one is doing that again. I could remember in Abuja, we send our boys to the Nyanya Karu Aziz, where you have hold up as they are coming in the morning, they, as people are coming to the town, then they share to them. In Lagos also, we go to different places. But that one is now archaic. It is out of date. It is no longer fashionable. Just like so many things we do in the past. Just like I, know, I could remember that by that time, we we're also doing a newspaper advertisement. Like Tuesday and Thursday, Guardian, you advertise and uh, you paid uh, up to 80 to 100,000. Then later it was uh, over up to 150 per publication. But you notice that uh, not everyone will see, get to see that uh, publication. It will not go around. On the radio advertisement, you pay for jingles. And every that period, if you are not by your radio, your money could be taken as a rare. Then you have to listen to yourself to make sure that the, that advert is going and all this. That. But today now we are doing uh, automations. You use the, we use the social media. You will put your advertisement, and then within a second, the whole world will get to see it. So that is what uh, is happening. So now you see that uh, all uh, the members, uh, attending members here, got our advert via the social media. That is why we always think outside the box. If possible, we shatter the box. You have to do things that will add uh, value to your organization. Be creative. Today, you can, uh, you can do what we call podcasting. You can blast from the comfort of your room, just the way we are having this uh, lecture now. Before COVID-19, many of our brothers going to, the, to Malaysia and the UK and other places were having uh, their PhDs, masters by research, of which you go there, you register, you do your registration, do the one month uh, intensive uh, coaching on the research methodology, mm -hmm. Then you now come back to your respective uh, home. Some will go back to their country. I know a friend that uh, did his uh, PhD in Malaysia, and uh, he was uh, he was working all through that period in uh, in the, uh, in the one organization there. Because uh, you don't you go to look for your hunt for your you don't go to hunt for your professor on a daily basis the way we do in Africa. What they do is that. Uh, you are on the, on, the, on the go. You are, you are uploading uh, your coursework and everything. And one is seeing it on a daily basis, making corrections and guiding you on what to do. And you can see that uh, with the, uh, one of the functional, uh, functional uh, uh, area of COVID-19 is promoting this uh, aspect for us. Many people now don't uh, want anything physical. They want to stay in their comfort zone and uh, get it done. You listen more attentively when you are in your comfort zone. I could remember whenever we have uh, programs in Lagos, people come by flight, and some will be urging you to round up immediately because they want to catch up with your flight. Somebody will be running a helter skelter, and the risk uh, involved is another thing. That is why. I mean, by Monday, go back to your organization, look at things that are not working, things that are archaic in major, things that are old fashioned, and see how you can uh, bring them to life. Make them work again. Today now, we, you can stay in the, uh, your comfort zone and get goods from uh, the Asian countries, buy goods from America, buy goods from uh, different Europe without even uh, reaching there. People are no longer, uh, there's what we call a virtual uh, virtual office today. 
you have an office somewhere, but you are not physically present here. It is, uh, we have, we are, they are doing that in Nigeria now. In Ikeja, you have offices, where a virtual office, whereby a single company will just have the space and be representing, representing over 20 to 30 establishments. Anytime you have a correspondence, then they will mail it to you to treat. So you notice that when you are supposed to pay millions for office accommodation, you are not paying thousands. And uh, it is so flexible that you can even pay monthly. That is why most multinationals now are using that uh, option. They can come to any country, trans have a contact to do their business and get out with their money intact. So because uh, you have to be creative. Then always look out for competitors. Remember I told you earlier, don't go to bed until your competitors are already sleeping. Interaction with employees and customers, your employees, make sure that they are happy and they are ready to go more, do, to, to do things, uh, to, to perform magic. Your customers, you have a suggestion box, the way we used to in, the, in those days. If they are happy, they should tell you. If they are happy, they should tell uh, others. When they are not happy, then they should channel their grievances to you. Deliver social responsibility. Let the host community enjoy why you are there. <laughs> Two things. Give them uh, social amenities. Be a factor of change. Then the various uh, duties of a professional manager, we have the supervisory role, the change management role, and the decision-making role. Leadership skill, then the functions of management has been taken care of. The post curve relate to the story of Moses and Jethro, where P stands for planning, O for organizing, S for staffing, D for directing, C for o, CO for coordinating, R for reporting, and B for budgeting. But the most widely accepted uh, are functions of management given by Coons and O'Donnell. That is planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling. For theoretical purposes, it may be convenient to separate the function of management for practically, but uh, practically, these functions are overlapping in nature. They are highly inseparable. Each function blend into the other, and each if each affect uh, the performance of uh, others. And see there, we have the chart there. It has been taken care of. Controlling, and what have you? And you run dynamic uh, environment. Economic environment refers to us the sum of total of all factors, forces which are capable of affecting the health of an economy. Economy environment can be classified into two, namely external and internal environment. We see that as a macro and micro environmental forces, seen and unforeseen, controllables and uncontrollables. External environment is the totality of all available forces outside the economy and over which the economy has no control. We have no control of the uh, macro environmental forces like the coronavirus, COVID-19. It came and everything was uh, disorganized. Many companies have found themselves in the state of insolvency. They can no longer pay for services rendered and loan obtained. Among the external environment are specific uh, genera. Specific and genera. Specific forces are those valuables that affect the organization or corporation alone. They may include customers, suppliers, competitive firm, investors, and uh, internal organizational changes. These forces are specific to the type of business or industry. They are the controllables the micro for environmental forces, which a manager can control. Then the unforeseen, the general forces, 
are the forces that affect that affect all the firms of an industry. They may be social, political, like the political, like the June 12 of this country, many people, companies were running helter skelter. Then it could be a legal uh, factor, a legal factor where there could be an uh, embargo that uh, so -so things should not happen again. Now that all the borders have been closed, then as a professional manager, maybe you are bringing the, your goods from those uh, organizations, uh, those countries where borders are closed. What uh, alternatives? What alternative measures have you taken? It could be technological situations. Why the 21st century, the 21st century and using machines that are uh, archaic in nature. That is why you must uh, understand the dynamism of your organization. Nigeria's economic environment is very dynamic. It is characterized by uncertainty, policy somersault, and consistencies. Because of the huge amount of uncertainty, planning becomes a Herculean task. The professional manager cannot uh, therefore forecast factors of the economic environment because they are dynamic, taking into consideration the likely changes beforehand. The environment, however, if the changes are technical in nature, they can be very rapid. And if they are not anticipated, there are possibilities that uh, anything can happen. Besides the economic uh, environment comprises of many factors, all these factors are related to each other. Thus, their individual effect on the economy can hardly be recognized. Dynamic and economic environment are related to the local conditions. And this is the reason the economic environment differs from one country to another. For example, the factors that affect uh, the location of industry in Malaysia may be different from uh, those in the United uh, Kingdom or Africa. In an environment characterized by uncertainty, information about environmental factors is scarce, and predicting external dynamic becomes an obstacle. In such an environment, it is difficult to calculate the cost of alternative decisions and the probability of their success, and this may increase the risk of failure. Nigeria have been told to expect uh, a bleak a bleak economy in 2016, just the way the same uh, story has been told in 2021 too. That is why you see that uh, everyone is running helter skelter. What is very short today cannot be too short tomorrow. You can see that the market, uh, uh, things are, have increased in the market. There is virtually no commodity that has not been increased. There's no product you see today that has not changed in price from what it used to be. A bag of uh, cassava now goes for uh, 30,000 in the market. I could remember the other day, last week, I went, uh, I, I went to my farm somewhere and uh, uprooted uh, about uh, three pickup of uh, cassava. On the way going back to the town, <laughs> police arrested uh, the van. <laughs> that uh, the, the, the driver was carrying cocaine. <laughs> when I demanded to know what, what he meant by that, he told me that don't I know that cassava has become an essential commodity, that uh, it is not something that it is cast now. And that is why those that are having it now are on top of their game. So you can see that uh, the, the, what, uh, what was sure yesterday cannot be sure today. The economy, economist, the economist, according to the magazine analysis, analyst, early sign uh, of a uh, worrying uh, resurgence of economic uh, nationalism, stressing that economic growth under the present dispensation will be uninspiring. 
in 2021, giving policy uncertainties and a lower oil price environment, the Economist Intelligence Unit expects growth to remain well below recent average throughout the 2016-2020 forecast period. Nigeria budget balance, you can see that even right now, we are having a deficit. The 2021 budget, they are going to borrow much, much, much more. And the president uh, is already forecasting that. Well, what we need to understand is that uh, we must, uh, as a professional manager, you must analyze the, uh, the environment, how it affects your organization. You must do what we call SWOT analysis. You must understand the growth, the, uh, the strength, weakness, opportunity, and the strength of your organization. You can see that SWOT analysis is there in the paper. The micro and the macro environment should be analyzed. Professional managers have a Herculean task in managing turbulent economics. The professional manager is expected to do the following, anticipating labor market and economic agenda and economic trends, coordinating workforce investment activities with economic development and education strategies, bringing relevant parties together to address workforce and competitive challenges in a sustainable and collaborative way, promoting the participation of employers in the public force investment system, ensuring the effective provision of connecting, brokering, and coaching activities through intermediaries to help employees meet hiring needs and, com and competitiveness concerns, developing linkages with economic development activities, including available state and local economy, retention and recruitment activities, devising and overseeing strategies for incumbent working training, developing layoff aversion strategies, exchanging information about potential dislocations, exploring early interventions and pre-feasibility studies for alternatives. Always, you must always look at alternatives. Professional managers cannot control the weather, but they can design and build a ship and equip it with a leadership team that can navigate the ocean under all weather conditions. Organizations that become more flexible and skilled at making critical decisions when the timing is right have enormous opportunities to capture market and profit from and profit from companies that persist in managing as if the future economic environment is reasonable is reasonably predictable. It is difficult to create a Nostradamus out of a professional manager because whatever they do is within the confines of bounded rationality. No one can forecast with scientific accuracy what event tomorrow brings. What is critical, however, is that investors need assurance that they have made the right investment, investment choices. That, that does not remove uncertainties in life endeavors, but more information and education helps the professional manager makes a better decision, even if the future is not always certain. Intelligent planning does help. Intelligent planning does help. Take note, intelligent planning does help. Uncertainty of life sometimes causes glitches in what uh, would otherwise be a full print. Thank you. As a professional manager, you must uh, understand the, the five Ps. The five Ps. Proper preparations prevent poor performance. That is the five Ps. If you have that at the back of your mind, the sky will be your starting point and not your limit. Proper preparations prevent poor performance. I believe uh, we have done justice to the theme of uh, today's induction, title, role of uh, professional managers in a dynamic environment. And many of us will go home as a better manager after today. If you want to hear prosperity, 
If you want to hear prosperity, grow grains. 10 years prosperity. 10 years prosperity, grow trees. Grow trees. 100 years prosperity, grow people. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir, for that. Thank you, wonderful. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. 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 My herbal distra, Dr. Abdullah Ejibri Salu, for that um, wonderful presentation on the roles of a professional managers in a dynamic environment. I want to believe at this uh, point that the registrar has done justice to today's uh, team of um, deduction on the roles of a professional managers in a dynamic environment. And by the time we return back to our various establishments, we believe we are going to be a better managers from today. I told us from the beginning of um, the session that here we are not coming to teach you new things. We are not trying to invent new things that you've not heard of before, but that we are coming to waking the belief of those things that we are already familiar with, but we are not using them. Uh, rather, we are coming to call our attention to those things that is happening around us day in, day out, in the course of delivering our, of, um, our activities, daily activities, but we are not paying cognizance attention to. And um, I want to believe that in the journey of um, over an hour with the registrar, on the roles of a professional manager and administrators of um, the roles of a professional manager in a dynamic environment has um, done justice to that which I have said earlier on. In the course of um, delivering his uh, presentation, he made us to understand the power of delegation, the power of um, delegation. But it baffles me that even in this 21st century, after so many thousand years, after the first management advice was given by the first management consultants on earth, some of the managers of today's dispensation are still living and operating the same way Moses was operating then before his uh, father-in-laws gave him that advice. At times, most of our managers, we don't like delegating because we don't want subordinates to know what we are sitting on. We have seen a situation whereby somebody is due for promotion and he's been told by the superior that, Oga, your promotion is due and we are processing it now. You are going to be promoted from that office in which you are so that another person can take over from you. And um, what did the person do? Rather, instead of him to embrace the promotion, he bluntly told, told the boss that, oh God, please, I'm begging you in the name of anything that you know that is precious to you, that I don't want this promotion you are talking about. Just allow me to remain in that office where I am. Because of wanting or the other that is passing is one of the reasons why you see some people well, even when they are supposed to go for leave, they are due for leave, they will not want to go for it. Maybe the atrocity that they have been committing in that position that they are. And uh, one thing we forget in life is that if we decide to be jack of all trade managers, whether by nature, or by whatever means, one day we will not remain in that office which we are seated forever. And he also made us to understand the power of thinking outside the boss. As a manager, you don't go to sleep until your competitors are already sleeping. 
He has told us that whenever there is an adverse placement, most especially among the um, private establishment, private businesses, you see there will be advertising for 20 years working experience. Where do you think that 20 years is coming from? Which means your competitor are ready to take away from you that staff in which you are not seeing the importance of. Your competitors are ready to take away from you that staff who has contributed so much, a lot to your organization. Your contributors are ready, uh, competitors are ready to take away from you in which um, that staff, in which is giving them sleepless night that is making your own organization to flourish Why they are finding it difficult. That is why it is important as a manager, why we try to delegate when needed, we should also try as much as possible to think outside the box. If possible, we shatter the box so that we can see clearly. We shatter the box because here, Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, we always tell, tell ourselves that the day you stop thinking, that is the day you start think because you become like a murky water in a particular place. You become stagnant. Once a water has stayed in a particular spot for so long, that place became, before you know, it become murky and before you know, it starts sinking. And that is the same thing. The same thing applies to us as human beings, as managers. The day you start, you stop thinking. The day you stop thinking outside the box, that is the day you become stagnant. And before you know, your competitors will take over from you. I will not want to start another lecture after lecture, but we should know that at the back of our mind, that as a manager, we should be the last to be sacked from any establishment. As managers, we should have at the back of our mind that we are the hubs that roll the wheels of every establishment to the decision you are taking on that seat in which you are sitting seated today, you should know that we have a long way to go either to make your organization or to mar your organization. And I want to believe that after today, you are going to be a good manager and at the same time, a good ambassador of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. On that note, I would like to open the floor for questioning, for questions, contributions, observation, either in line with what we have presented, what we have discussed so far, or outside the paper, it might even be a scenario facing you as a person in your organization. The floor is open for questions, contributions, and um, observations. Thank you all. If you have any question, kindly unmute your microphone, tell us your name once again and where you are connecting from, then let's have your view. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you so much. My name is Kyle Delauri once again. I want to thank the registrar for the wonderful presentation. We have really learned from it. Um, however, I would love to um, um, make a clarification, especially on, the, on his statement, which says that um, uh, managers should uh, handle a task at a time and um, complete one before another. I haven't spent uh, about uh, two and a half decades in the consulting um, industry. I think we have a different um, opinion to that because we always train and advise our managers to be multitask. Um, it's even one of the requirements um, of um, employment when we want to employ managers. We always look for people that can be multi that are multitask, that can do more than two, three things at the same time. So, so I'm just, uh, I just felt I should yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, point this out. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so the, you know, there are exception to that. Why I say that was because uh, when you involve yourself in uh, 
project at the same time, and you want to supervise uh, in, uh, both, you may end up not uh, uh, doing it uh, diligently. So we know that there are exceptions to that uh, rule. If you have a subordinate who can uh, do the job for you, then uh, you delegate. You know, we have the four Ds to invoke. You have to do it now. You defer, you delegate, and uh, uh, you delete. Since uh, you are for you, there, 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 there are ways you can uh, be multitasking, whereby you show how capable you are and uh, those you have under you. At least if your subordinates uh, are good to do the job, then you delegate to them and you move on to the other ones. But uh, imagine when you have a task that uh, you are supposed to be present in, uh, to sign a contract in Sokoto, at the same time you are to sign another contract in Borno the same day. You cannot achieve these two, except you must be ready to lie to one. So but a situation where you have people who can deliver, then uh, when you invoke uh, one of the D that has to do with delegation. So this, uh, if you have uh, qualified people and you work as a team, then nothing stops you from multitasking. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that clarification, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Sir. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. All right. Hello, sir. Uh, yeah, Hello. Go, go ahead. Hello. Sir, can that multitask apply to an, uh, uh, to an engineer? Whereby we have uh, two things being done at the same time, as in the construction company. Yeah. Can that one be applied to it? Uh, yeah, it, it depends on the, the position you are. If you are the strategic uh, manager, you know, we have, we have categories uh, of uh, like, like this thing, the classes of uh, managers. We have the strategic. We have the tactical and we have the operations. So like uh, if you are at the strategic level, then you must have your line managers or the tactical managers who can carry on even when you have 10 jobs to do. Then you send different people because they are qualified. There is something uh, I, I forgot to ship in in the course of the lecture. That is the style of, uh, the style of leadership. You know, we have uh, the delegative slash uh, participative style we have the, the authoritative uh, uh, slash autocratic style, and we have the less affair, less affair style. As a professional manager, if you are that type of, uh, if you are the manager, that, uh, then that is the style of uh, leadership, where you have enough time to play with. Management is not written down Thank on you. your neck. You can use the participative style. You can use the delegative style, which has to do with uh, management by objective, propounded by uh, Peter Drucker. And management by objective begets management by commitment. That is when you, have, you ask everyone in the organization what they feel about the task at hand. But the situation where you don't have uh, enough uh, time to, uh, to play with, then you, you must use the, the autocratic style. It's when you are no longer interested in the process, but the outcome. You give somebody a task to go and uh, uh, do, how he goes about it should not be your headache. That is when uh, a subordinate will bring you good money, and you ask him what is good about the money. Okay. Because you are using an, uh, the autocratic style. And uh, the less affair, the less affair style is not too common in uh, Africa. Our command in Nigeria. So I know that uh, many businesses today, we are our own enemies. And that was why there was a question that uh, was asked somewhere in Ghana. That why is it that uh, the so-called rich are not uh, operating, uh, establishing companies for the poor to work? The man told us that uh, instead of him to establish a factory here and be working, he prefers to be shipping from China and uh, other nations to come and sell. Because, uh, in Nigeria, in Africa, we are our own enemies. If you bring it in here, somebody somewhere want to imagine. If you, I saw a, a complaint yesterday where the man uh, hired about uh, three different guys within a span of uh, uh, three months, they all embezzled. So it's like every man for himself. We are in the jungle. That is why you see the super rich companies in Africa who don't mind going, going extra mile to bring an India 
to come and be the overall, overseeing everything that is happening in his company. Because uh, those ones, you pay, you pay them much, but uh, they don't uh, steal. At least uh, they are somehow better. But uh, 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 an African guy or somebody that uh, has that uh, as, his, as his DNA, within a short of uh, a span of 20, a span of one month, he can cause a work. So like the less affair approach, you use that approach where they are professionals that uh, may not uh, need the uh, excess supervision. That is why if you are uh, that manager in a, a, such an engineering company, you believe that the, the people are working, working in, the, in the company are all engineers. They are qualified. And you assign different roles to different uh, staff. You notice that uh, in such an environment, you can multitask using the less affair approach. You must not be there too possible to, 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 to do everything. You give them the directive, go back, uh, that task must be specific, it must be measurable, it must be achievable, it must have a time bound, which can be evaluated and reviewed. And what do you need to see at the end of the day is your report to show that uh, they have delivered. We asked this question the other time that uh, in between this style of leadership, the delegative style, the autocratic style, and the less affair, which one would you want to operate in your organization? Somebody will tell you that uh, being the autocratic, that uh, no, 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 you will not want to do that. You don't want to be seen as a wicked person. But there are situations that warrant that. If you don't have enough time to play with, they will even your subordinate will see you as a changed person. <laughs> By the time one greet you good money, you ask him what are you, what is good about the money, you will know that the ogre has changed today. He has to do the job. I could remember when I was working with one uh, company in Lagos, a spinning company who were producing uh, yarn uh, from cotton to textile uh, mill around uh, Ikeja, Opa, and uh, Dokwemu as is then. There was a time, uh, there was a kind of defect in the material sent abroad. And I was asked to remain in the factory for 72 hours. It was the, manage the, the manager that was uh, uh, always uh, with me, who was a different person that day. He used a tone of, uh, I could not imagine that I should remain there how I go about it is not his fucking problem. And that was what happened for three good uh, day and night. I was in the factory taking samples from about 18 to 20 machines running helter skelter to the point that my people declared me missing and came to the company because there was nothing like GSM there. <laughs> so you can see that uh, a good manager should be able to, should be, should be a situational manager. You can multitask where you have professionals and everyone knows his job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other person, please? Yes, please. I want to talk about uh, keeping to time. All right. This meeting was supposed to have started 10 o'clock, but it didn't start 10 o'clock. As managers, I think this is one of the things that we should adjust. In our workplaces, in our homes, in the environment, anywhere we go, time is money. Then in time, this is things that are not supposed to be, it's not good for us at all. Yeah. Once we schedule a meeting, abide by the time, this is time, African time, African time, African time, it's not good for us. Yeah. Managers are supposed to keep time. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you for the wonderful advice. Thank you. Because thank you, you ma. I had raised my hand, hand though. You are not looking at the time. people that raised their hands. Not uh, waiting oh, for others. Sorry, know? madam. Sorry, madam. Um, so, please. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, head up your conclusions, please.
Hello, what do you say? Hello, can I? Yeah, go ahead and make your contribution, madam. Okay, um, I was going to make my, I was going to react to the last question, not uh, Madam Hawa's talk about the keeping to time, which is in order. Thank you, Madam, for noting that. So I was going to respond um, just to add my, lend my voice to what the registrar explained about um, multitasking. So okay. I have uh, over 20 years experience and I can say that initially it used to be like a strength when you go for an interview and your ability to multitask was a very good um, skill to have for you to be employed anywhere. Even when you rise as a manager, the fact that you have that skill to multitask used to be a strength. But you will all agree with me that with the new way of working, technology, everything, there is now a new way of working and it's called um, agile working. And one of the skills to have as an agile worker is for you to be aware and I like that the registrar used the personality type to explain the benefits and um, not so benefit um, attributes of multitasking. I really like that he used the personality trait. I would also like to say that multitasking um, is no longer a very good to have because it's better you start to you focus on one particular task and do it and do it well and then move on to another um, tax. Because if you have so many things in your hands and you're distracted with so many things, you might do a shoddy job that will not even make anybody happy. But if you concentrate on one tax and finish it and take up another one, that is a better skill to have. And also the why I say I like that the registrar used the personality um, trait to explain it, is that when you delegate, it is part of you developing your team members, you empower them, they are more sure-footed. And for you to be a good manager, it's going to be that you've also been able to raise your type. You are not afraid to leave your job. Like you rightly said, people are afraid to go on vacations and all of that. And you are forming busy that you are busy. But if you are able to um, delegate and um, make sure you, you have groomed people who can step into your shoes at every given time, it makes you a better manager. I just thought I should let yeah, my thank, voice Thank you for thing. the wonderful contribution. Uh, Mr. Obakar. Thank you. All right, um, questions, please. Any other contributions, questions? Observation. Move to the next All right, one. Mr. Steven. Mr. Steven, go ahead. Okay. Um. Good afternoon, everybody. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. I just want to share um some experience on the um issue of um, delegating responsibility to team members. Okay. Um, I I'll take it from two perspectives. Many years ago, when I just started uh, banking. I, I, had a, I had a supervisor who taught me the hard way. He thought he was punishing me, but at the end of the day, he helped me. You know, we're still new on the job. He came as a supervisor. He would bully us. He would, you know, threaten us. When you meet him, that, okay, this is a challenge. How do we sort it out? He will tell you, go and worry. Go and sort it out yourself. Please, please don't disturb me. And it was helping me in a way. What happened? Eventually, I will go and sort it out. I will make a call, talk to one or two persons, and find a way around it. And I became a master of it. Something happened. I, I, went, I, I was out of the home, and I, uh, somebody came to relieve me. And um, I was in training school then. My phones are supposed to be on silent and all that. And on the normal things, one of the things I used to meet him for, and he tells me to go and worry. The truth of the matter is the relief officer that was relieving me and himself made a mistake. He approved it and it was catastrophic. They started calling me. Unfortunately, I was in the lecture hall and they could not reach me. So when I eventually got to know, it was an embarrassing situation to all of them. 
I told myself that I'm not going to be that kind of supervisor. That is one bad experience that I personally got. Now, let me give uh, the second experience on the advantage of delegating. Many years later, I have had the opportunity to, on the job, train a lot of people. And my, my style is not the way I learn. My style is, if you are working with me, you must know everything I do. You must know everything we do, regardless of your level. Now, something happened. I, as a supervisor and a team lead, I went on vacation. I went on vacation and somebody else came to relieve me. And one of the ATMs had a, an issue on a weekend. And this is something that normally you're supposed to get um, a vendor to come and sort out. But over time, I have built capacity in my team, even to the smallest, let me use that word, word smallest, the, 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 the low, lowest scale in the team. I built capacity in there. And the relief officer was like, oh, we have to call the uh, ATM vendor and all that. And that will take about two, three days. And one of them, one of the team members said, no, hold on. Mr. Steve has talked this before. And no one be rude. She went into that machine and she sorted it out. When I came back, I was so proud. As a team leader, I was so proud. If you build capacity in your team, honestly, when there is a need, when the occasion arises, they will make you proud. I don't know why most uh, managers maybe fear or whatever. They, they, they tend to withhold knowledge. I am not saying leave all the rules. As managers are growing, there are other tasks that are coming up. You should tell things to people and watch them do it. And when they do, move on to the next stage, like the registrar said, move on to the next stage and begin to do something more complex. So as strategic managers, we shouldn't be you're too conservative or too scared of a, a, a delegating um, responsibility to um, our team members. That's just my contribution and experience. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Steven, for your contribution and using your personal experience. Before we move to the next um, agenda, please, do we still have anyone with any contributions or observation? All right, if we don't have um, any, before we proceed to the next um, agenda, which is the oath taking, and I want to believe we all have um, a copy of the oath that has been sent via uh, email. And um, in case you, you don't have it, no problem, we'll sure. take responsibility of that. It will be uh, shared on the screen. You just um, follow along after the induction. It will be sent to you. Then you sign proper and forward back to us via our uh, email address. And uh, before we go into that fully, before we go that in, uh, go into that fully, please, there is a message on the chat um, or, uh, button already showing mm -hmm. that you should send a message to a WhatsApp number that is stated there. The number is... Um, 081-6950-7337. Send a direct WhatsApp message to this number so that you can be added to the WhatsApp group of the Institute and the, the Telegram um, handle of the Institute. And from there, we can send you other links of um, other social media handle of the Institute, which you can um, get a um, timely message um, on time and uh, any other um, <clears throat> any other information that we might um, want to pass um, across. That handle is um, one of the easiest way to get um, a message um, from us. And um, secondly, somebody was asking about um, what um, Imperial School of Modern Management is all about. Well, this Imperial School of Modern Management is just a training uh, institute 
that um, is out for management training and um, capacity building. Although once you belong to the WhatsApp group, most of all these messages with um, other um, sisters um, institute that has collaboration with Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, we get to know more better and their activities um, from there. Once again, the number is 081. Six nine five zero seven three three seven. Send a direct WhatsApp message to that number. Then from there you will be added to all the media handle of the institute. Thank you, and uh, we are ready for the oath taking now, Mr. Registrar. Sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Abubakar. This is the induction proper. The presentation was part of the pre-induction, but now the oath taking. After the oath, you become a bona fide member of the Institute. Those of you who are joining us as fellows, you will show the world that uh, by using the designatory, after your BSc, MSc, MBA, PhD, then uh, FIPMA is what to use to show that you are a fellow Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. The full, uh, the full members, it's MIPMA, Member, Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators. Then the associate is AIPMA, Associate Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators. This code of ethics and professional conduct describes the expectations that we have of ourselves and our fellow practitioners all over the world. It articulates the ideas to which we aspire, as well as the behavior that are mandatory in our professional volunteer roles. Therefore, as a member of the Institute, I, your name, pledge to conduct myself professionally with truth, accuracy, fairness, and responsibility to the public, to pay my annual membership subscription as a twin due, to foster the highest standards of professional competence among those whom I am responsible, to enhance the proficiency and stature of the profession by acquiring and applying knowledge in the most appropriate manner, to participate in our professional development programs so that one's knowledge and performance are enhanced. To dissociate myself from anything that will tarnish a good image of the Institute or bring the Institute into disrepute. To honor confidence received or given in the course of professional activity. To comply with both the letter and the intent of the laws of the country in which I practice and agreed contractual obligations to cooperate with all organizations and individuals engaged in activities which promote the development and standing of the Institute, to have a positive duty at all times to respect the truth and shall not disseminate false or misleading information, to abide by and to encourage others to practice the professional code of ethics of the Institute, that I make this pledge in good faith and in accordance with the policy of the Institute. I understand that the Institute reserves the right to suspend me but it gives me some relief from membership of the Institute should I violate any of the above promises which are voluntarily made by me. So help me God. Congratulations. You Thank are now you, a certified member of the Institute. You can move and uh, congratulate. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations to all. Congratulations to Gabriel from Calabar. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. 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 Thank you very much. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations to you. Mr. Obakar, you can move and continue now. All right, congratulations to every one of you who are now a board five bars of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. You are all welcome to IPMA family. 
you can now be addressed a bona fide member as a fellow member, fellow professional colleagues of um, the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. Congratulations, congratulations, and congratulations to you all once again. Like um, we all said from um, the beginning of the session, the mandate given to the Institute is to admit people based on experience and qualification. And uh, there is a target given to the Institute in which we must cover before we um, approach the National Assembly. And on that note, I would like to urge us all to be a good ambassador of this um, great institute by introducing our friends and um, colleagues, both at place of works and um, our family members whom we deem it fit that should be part of um, this journey. Also to take um, the both step of um, the direct professional membership um, admission of the institute. Like the registrar said, we have over 8,000 uh, members for those of us who are coming in today, over 50 of us who are inducted today, it's also addition to the Institute. And um, if all members of the Institute decide to take it upon them themselves, we, within the shortest period of time, we are going to, we are going to um, attain um, the mandate given to us. And before we know, our bill should be on the floor on uh, the National Assembly. And when it's time for the public hearing, we'll be glad to call all of us, those who will be chance and um, that will be willing also to be out there in order to defend what we are doing in Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. Because when you tell somebody who is not in, who doesn't know what we are doing now, they'll see us as one of those institutes. You, because we do come across um, all such uh, sort of uh, messages at times. All, one of those institutes, all this mushroom institute, what have you, but you'll be there. And I believe with your experience with us today, you can beat your chest that yes, this is not just an ordinary institute like every other institute. The institute is out to achieve a mandate. The institute is out for an objective. The institute is out for, for them to accomplish when it comes to management and administrative uh, profession in Nigeria, Africa, and beyond. And we'll be glad if you can um, help the Institute in the course of um, the membership drive, thereby telling uh, people outside there to take um, the both step in which you have taken today in order to become um, a membership of um, the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. Once again, before we take um, the closing remark and uh, closing prayer, I will quickly want to repeat that number once again, in which you are to send a direct WhatsApp message to, for you to be added on uh, the social media handle of the Institute, such as um, the WhatsApp, the Telegram, even the YouTube link of the Institute will be sent to us where we can assess the recorded, uh, the recorded uh, session of um, today's uh, induction. That can as well serve as um, evidence for those who might be having um, a doubtful mind of what uh, the Institute is all about by the time you present your certificate to them and also try to tell them about the Institute. The um, YouTube link is an avenue where they can easily go through about the activities and other seminars workshop of the Institute that um, we have done um, in the past. And you as a member, the link will be sent to you whereby you can assess it um, at your leisure time. The number once again is 081-6950-7337. As for the certificates, before the week, um, this new week that
starting tomorrow and officially are going to the week runs out we are going to get in touch with you on how you will get your certificate before the week runs out we are going to contact you on how your certificate will get um, to you and as for those of us in abuja we can um, visit the office at our leisure time i think from on wednesday or thursday there, there um, about we can visit the office at number 16 kotonu street who says on seas to pick up our certificates number 16 kotonu street who says on seas and those outside abuja those in lagos we are going to call you will tell you how the certificate um, will be sent to you before the week um, runs out. Don't forget, whatever we have um, discussed here today, let's go out there, be a good ambassador of the Institute, be a good manager as from today. Don't be that type of uh, managers that is still operating in a way. Don't be that type of managers that is still operating in the days of um, Moses. Let's um, change our mode of operation. Let even people be surprised that uh, within um, last week and uh, this week, what has changed? This man has changed. This woman has changed. He, he or she has become a better person when it comes to the administration of um, his or her duty. At least by so doing, just like the registrar said earlier on, the sky will not only be our limit, it, but it's going to be our starting point. On that note, we are going to take um, the closing remark of um, all the newly inductees and uh, the person who is going to give us um, that closing remark is um, Mr. Yakubu Gawan. Please, if you can hear me, unmute your microphone and give us the closing remark on behalf of all the newly inducted uh, members into the Institute of Professional Matters and Administrators of Nigeria today. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, the Honorable Registrar and the organizers of uh, uh, IPMA. Uh, I want to thank you all and uh, my colleagues. I want to say congratulations and uh, <coughs> I want to say uh, it's a day of bliss for all of us. We have learned. And today, a new feather has been added to our lives. And I want to say we all go out there and make the Institute proud. We have a responsibility because what happened today is a real privilege. We have a responsibility to ensure that the mandate given to the Institute becomes a reality during our time. So let us go out there, getting more people to be members. On this note, I want to say thank you to the organizers. I want to say congratulations to all of us. More blessings, more grace, and God's protection. Thank you, God bless you. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir, for that um, wonderful remark. A quick one once again, um, for the, the signatory letters of the Institute, you can use as a fellow FIPMA after the writing of your name, FIPMA. While as a full member, you use MIPMA, uh, MIPMA. And as an associate, you use AIPMA. AIPMA. Once again, I want to say a big congratulations to each and every one of you. And um, for the registrars of um, higher institution who are present here with us, please, I would like you, whenever you are sending your WhatsApp message, indicate it there because we would like um, the institute to also partner with your institution. Let's see how we can bring your staff on board, both your academic and non-academic staff on uh, board of the institute so that we can all build a safe and a better um, management slash administrative um, environment. On that note, we have come to the end of um, today's um, session, but before we go, have it at the back of your mind that after today's induction, it's not going to end here, year in, year out. 
day in, day out. You'll be getting management tips, management updates from us, and manage whenever the institute is organizing any workshop or the collaborating uh, institute is organizing any workshop, we'll send a, a message across to you so that you can take part. Because one thing, like I said earlier on, is for you to be a member of a professional body. And another thing is for you to be abreast with the current managerial slash ad administrative um, experimental dynamo of the time. It's another, uh, another area in which your membership has to be um, validated all the time, year in, year out. On that note, please, um, on that note, I would like um, a Muslim brother to give us, or a Muslim brother to give us a closing uh, prayer before we call it a day. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, malik yom yudhi. Iya kanabudu wa iya in ihidna shu'ad al-Muslim. Ratmu din an amta alayhim, liran al-madnub alayhim, waladun amin. I pray that we reach home safely, may the Almighty guide us, protect us, and show us the way through. Thank you. I mean, thank you so much, madam, for that um, wonderful prayer. For those who have already sent their WhatsApp message, you have been sent a link to join the WhatsApp group and every other information will be passed to you from there. And uh, for somebody who was asking where to submit the old form, you can um, submit it through the same email we use in sending all the materials and um, your induction letters. You can submit them uh, through there. Once it is filled, signed, and uh, with today's date, please kindly send it um, to the email in which we use in sending you the details. Thank you all and congratulations to all of you once again. Do have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye.